Hey, you people, let's get this started. So we're back to another challenge video, and this time we're going through every single Mega Man X game. But if I get hit at least once, I have to go to the next game of the series. It's very similar to the classic Mega Man video I did, where I go through every single game in that series. And did the same challenge too. And I wasn't that successful much, I mean, except for Mega Man 8, where I actually got... Managed to go through the whole stage without getting hit. But... Mega Man X is more harder than, you know, Classic, which I love about X. If you know me, I love Mega Man X. If you love Sonic the Hedgehog, you will definitely love Mega Man X. It's fast-paced, it has a killer soundtrack, and like, it has everything that you love from Sonic. Sure, it's more difficult than Sonic the Hedgehog, but you definitely have a good time with Mega Man X. And hopefully this video will get you into the series, or keep it interested into the series in general, because I have a lot of videos planned for... Mega Man in general, like in the future, so yeah. So we're on to the most iconic opening stage in the Mega Man game, which is Central Highway, with the most memorable tune and the most, you know, memorable, you know, stage. And I this is basically the. <laughs> now we're on to Mega Man X2, and while it's a step down from the first one, I really enjoy this one. I mean, Especially, like, you know, getting out the collectibles and everything, you know, it's a lot more, you know, easy to memorize in X1, X2, and even X4 compared to, like, X3. Actually, it's pretty good, too, but, like, you know, I have a couple problems about that, but, you know. What makes the first four X games so memorable is that, you know, the replay value, you know. <laughs> getting all the collectibles, memorizing them, you know, and getting better. Like, that's what I love about, you know, those all four games, you know. And, like, later ones, they don't really, you know... I mean, I'd be as good as, you know, the first four. And, like, the client quality, pretty much. But, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Opening stage. Also got the dash of default, which is pretty nice. It's always been default in the series, you know, since then. But, yeah. And next one, you have to get to the dash, you know, as a power-up. <laughs> This is gonna be a hot take, like, well, more of a cold take for me, but in my opinion, Mega Man X3 is not the best game in the series. In fact, I call this game a little bit overrated for various reasons. The first thing, the first glaring issue is that, like, they throw in so much collectibles at your face that it got to the point where, like, it's hard to, like, memorize which ones are. Unless you're, like, you're very, I mean, very good at the game. And also, like, you know, the thing about, like, X1, X2, and X4 is that, like, you know, every single collectibles, you know, and backtracking wasn't as hard. It was easy straight to the point. It was easy memorizing, you know, which collectibles are there, you know, memorize the stages in here or there. But, like, X3, like, first thing first, the stages are huge. Like, they're huge. And also, not only getting, you know, like, wide, you know, parts, you know, Art tanks and you know your armor parts and all that stuff. You're getting you know ride armors, another armor like the gold the golden armor and even like Kata Two Zero's a uh, um Zero's a uh, Sea Saber and also like another capsule too. Like there's just so much collectibles at your face that like it got to the point where like it's hard to memorize you know for me at least. I mean I know a lot of people like this game a lot. I mean they think it's the best in the series, which I mean I respect, but personally for me like. There's just way too much that, like... And personally, like, i beaten this game, completion-wise, like, at least five or six times. Compared to, like, X1, X2, and X4, where I, you know, I played all of them. From start to finish, with completion, memorizing everything, like, you know, countless times. Compared to X3, where, like, only, like I said, i be beaten it, like, five, six times. I'm gonna get back to X3, and I'm actually gonna play through in X3. On, uh... The PS5 version, or oh, PS4 version of the Legacy Collection, but... Also, they did Zero Dirt, yeah. <laughs> And now we're on to the GOAT, which is not only the best X game, but it's also the best Mega Man game, period. And that is Mega Man X4, and... I love this game to death. Like... They mastered perfection in this game. Like, this is how you do a Mega Man X game, like... You mastered perfection. Like, if this game was um, a milkshake, 
it would have been the best milkshake humanity's ever seen. Like, this is literally peak gaming. I love every single bit about this game. The story, you know, I mean, voice acting is like cheesy, but like Mega Man 8, it's so bad it's good. But one problem I say about the story is that, like, you know, they kill off all the new characters in this game, like, when they introduce them. Like, you know, I feel like Iris, Colonel, and, like, Double could have had a bit more, uh, could have stayed a bit longer. We can go for Zero because he's a GOAT. I'm tired of playing X. But Zero is the best X character. Like, I can go on and on at how much I love this game to death. Like, this is how you perfect perfection. And it sucks that, like, after this game, the whole series went down the drain. And, like, it's a shame, too, but, like, I'm glad we have this masterpiece of a game. Like, this is, like, one of the most replayable Mega Man games, in my opinion. Like, I love this game so much. I love this game so much. Love it. And Zero, playing Zero because he's the GOAT of Zero. Yeah. My god, love. Alright, you're doing good progress so far. So... Now we're on to a game where the, it started the uh, decline of the Mega Man X series, and this is Mega Man X5 we're talking about. And this is actually my second least favorite Mega Man X game. Only behind X7 for various reasons. First things first, like, the whole game just actually feel pretty soulless and, like, empty, if you know what I mean. Like, watch the cutscenes, and, like, there's no, like, no, like, you know, anime like cutscenes. It's all, like, you know, still. No voice acting, you know, still frames and everything like that. Also, the level design and like is not good at all. Wrong with the atrocious backtracking. The backtracking is atrocious in this game. Yeah, this game is just not for me. It's been a hot minute actually since I last, you know, played this game from start to finish. It's like the first time I actually played it in a while. And also, here's one growing issue about this game that hurts this game a lot. And that is the unskippable text. And this is the thing in cutscenes and when Elia speaks. And since like since there's no way to like disable all this like to skip it, you have to go through all this text by spamming the A button constantly. And it's just annoying. Like it hurts the flow of the game. And especially during, you know, gameplay when Elia interrupts you all the time. And look at here. Like when you start the game, when you press before pressing a single button. Alias speaks and like it's a thing throughout the whole tutorial stage, even in other stages too. So yeah, it's been a while since I actually played this game, so I don't remember much about you know level design, but I remember level design was not as good at all compared to like you know. Quick. Hold up, quick. <laughs> Honestly, Mega Man X6 is not really that bad. I mean, sure it's not like, it's far from great, but it's all right. Like, there's still a lot of stuff I don't like in this game at all. Like, you know, like sometimes the fake difficulty and the... I really dislike the story too in this game. Like, I despise how they retcon X5's endings and like, brought in the stupid excuse to bring Zero back to life, but... Nonetheless, I mean, the soundtrack is a banger, like, probably, like, up there with, like, X1, X4. That's, like, the best soundtracks in the X Games, period. But, you know, like, honestly, you know, this is alright. I mean, I'd rather play this over X5 and X7 any day of the week. Like, I mean, there are some redeeming qualities in this game, and I do understand, you know, like, how this game got appreciated, you know, over the years, which, you know, I understand. And since Zero died in the last game, we can uh, only play as X for now. But, you know, we can walk him, you know, way out in the game if you uh, go for Nightmare Zero. That's another problem, too, with the game. Like, Nightmare Zero is also a, uh... Hey, it was, you know, X, you can, you know, use a charge shot. It's crazy how, like, thin this charge shot is. But, like, you know, it's very, uh, like, useful. 
Like, that laser is, like, very, like, skinny, but it can, uh, and also Zero Sword 2, which, is you know, it's fine, but I kind of feel like they missed the opportunity to, you know, use, uh, Zero's, uh, like, attacks. Come on, shit, this is, like, I feel like, you know, a trap. Wow, I'm stuck. Oh, wait a minute. Up. Yo. Also, like this new feature too, like you have to like hang over there, with the like ropes. That thought was nice. Also, like you can duck here too. I don't think you can duck in X5. It's been, like I said before, it's been a hot minute since I played X5 like fully, so I don't remember much about the game. So, uh, good progress so far, actually. Not that bad, actually. And also, like, have a boss fight here, too! I mean, it's a very straightforward opening stage. I mean, nothing really, you know, crazy going on here, or than, like, the banger music. Probably the most, you know, like, Thomas opening stages in, you know, X game. Okay! Ugh. This game. This game. One of, if not the worst, Mega Man X game that's out there. Like, it makes Mega Man X5 look like a masterpiece compared to this. Like, and I'm not saying much. Like, really, like, 95% of the game is just wrong. I would do say for this, you know, the controls are pretty nice, even though you're running at a snail's pace. But I have, you know, the movement of, the, of you know, the characters. Despite the fact you're running very slow. Two, um, what's it called? The soundtrack is like always, you know, pretty good. I mean, it's not the best out there. It's on the same level with like Mega Man X2 and X5, but there's some bangers here or there. Not really my cup of tea, but there's some, you know, fire ones. Um, second thing first is that, you know, the concept of Mega Man being in both 2D and 3D is not a very bad idea to think about it, to be honest with you. Like, sure it didn't work out well, but they can go back to experiment. <laughs> we are finally ending off on a high note with Mega Man X8. And honestly, like, this is actually pretty decent. No one near as good as the first four X games, but it is way better than the previous three X games before X8. Like, I... There's a lot of good stuff in this game, you know, great voice acting. A fantastic story, you know, the controls, oh, the controls are the best in the series by far. Very tight, very responsive, like all that. But the one huge problem is the level design. The level design is very inconsistent. Like, one stage you are, you know, on a jet ski, like, taking out enemies before fighting a Maverick. You, one stage you're on a flying car, chasing a Maverick before you fight him or her. I don't know. Um, what's it called? One stage, you're going down and doing something. I don't remember. I haven't played this game in a hot minute. You're doing something. I mean, you're, uh... And you have to go back up to fight the Maverick. It's very inconsistent. Which, I mean, if you don't have any of that Mega Man X, you know, level design. Like, it's, it's a shame, too, because controls are very good. Aside from that, it's a pretty decent game. And, you know... 